Hello, everyone. Recently, I was invited by an organization known as Glean to give a talk on the Adwa victory. That is the victory of Ethiopia, the first Italo-Ethiopian war, and to try to relate that to some of the contemporary issues in politics in Ethiopia. And I was with a, a great panel, and I'll, I'll talk about that panel in, in another video when I get to a song by Duke Ellington. But today, I'm here to review something from the Los Angeles Review of Books, and that is an article by my friend Elias Wendemu. He is the founder and the CEO of Sahai Publishers. You can go to their website. I'll link to them in the bio of this or the description of this video because they have great books on Ethiopian and general African history, but especially, of course, the Horn of Africa, African-American history in the United States, and Catholic history because it is centered around the LMU University, Loyola Marymount University, which is a Jesuit university here in Los Angeles. And it was the rival of my alma mater, Pepperdine, which is a Church of Christ University. So I'm going to read just a paragraph and a couple sentences he has here from his article, but I'm going to link to his article as well. And I encourage you to read it. I, I gave this article as suggested reading for the talk alongside uh, the Machiavellians, Defenders of Freedom by James Burnham, hat tip to both Curtis Yarvin and to Michael Malice, both of whom have suggested it and both of whom I follow. So this is Elias Wendemu. We all were taught that World War I, which claimed 16 million people in four years, began in 1914 after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo. The war was fought between the central powers, Germany, Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire, and Bulgaria, and the Allied powers, France, Great Britain, the Russian Empire, and Japan, which grew out of the Triple Entente of France, Great Britain, and the Russian Empire. The question is when and where were these political alignments first made, and why? The answer can't be found in any of the 21 combatant countries involved in the war in Europe or the place where the Duke was killed. The beginning lies in a far away country on a different continent, almost a decade earlier. It all began 125 years ago this week when Emperor Minulik II of Ethiopia defeated the Italian colonial power at Adwa on March 1st, 1896, and initiated a major railway line project. That's just a gursha or a little bite, a little morsel for you all to go read the rest of the article. I'm just going to point one very interesting fact about the two sides in the debate, the so-called intellectual community, which is still assailing good people everywhere in 2021 in the year of our Lord and 2013 in the year of mercy. That's the Giz calendar, of course. So on the one side, you have Britain and France and Russia. Interestingly, when you look at the dates of World War I, this is when they had sown the Western seeds of discord. Discord, of course, being one of the seven things that the Lord abominates. And in fact, that which his soul truly abominates more than all the other things. So they sowed discord amongst the brethren by spreading communism in Russia and getting rid of the czar, which is, of course, the Slavic way of saying Caesar. On the other side, during the time of the czar, the czar would have been Russia in the Orthodox Church, allied with Ethiopia. Germany at this time in World War I, under the Kaiser, another word for Caesar, the Germanic word for Caesar, was allied with Ethiopia. Austria-Hungary uh, is a monarchy. Germany is a monarchy. The Turks have an empire that you can call monarchic as well. So Ethiopia, Eritrea, and it's a different you know, definition at this time, Somalia, Kenya, Sudan, and Egypt are all the colonial interests 
of the likes of these places like Britain and France and Italy. And as they're trying to divvy up the remaining portion of Africa that's not colonized, mainly Ethiopia, they run into this figure of Menelik and they don't like him. So they try to have a lot of dastardly behind the scenes deeds against him and they plot and scheme against him. And what they don't want is they don't want a monarchic Germany, a monarchic Ottoman Empire, and a monarchic Ethiopia to be aligned. And eventually, all of these places had the seeds of discord planted in them and had various forms of either democracy or communism to get rid of the monarchy that is in those places and that were the long standing institutions and traditions of those places with all of their weird and beautiful rituals in religion that is contemporary and religion that is ancient. And so I want to call attention to that. And I want to encourage you all to go read his article at the LA Review of Books. Thank you.